Hello. I want to welcome you to uh, MBA 631 Marketing Strategy. I'm Dr. Flight, and this will be a very brief introduction to the course. And uh, what we want to do is just uh, walk through some of the course syllabus and give you just a little background information in terms of what you can expect over over the course of the next several weeks. So welcome. Um, I'm excited about marketing. Uh, I'm excited about having you in class and uh, being able to bring you a lot of great information that um, is theoretically sound in the area of marketing, but also very practical, just things that you could use in your work and in your careers as you as you uh, graduate and move move from this course and, and this uh, study of the MBA and, and go on. Um, so I want to just make sure that as we talk about marketing, we talk about what you can expect to learn, um, but, but also understand that this is simply one course um, of many that you take as an MBA, and that's a master's in business administration, meaning that you'll have lots of exposure to lots of areas of different of business, marketing, of course, being being one of those. So as we talk about marketing um, moving forward, uh, I'll make an effort and please ask um, if you have questions to apply marketing to other functions within the business. Um, so a business has lots of different activities that they engage in. Um, and um, marketing, of course, has a role to play with, with all of those, um, either directly or tangentially. So um, the integration of the function then with other mark, other business areas, um, it should be stressed and it should be something that when you walk away from this course, you, you're, you're comfortable with. So what do we want to think about as we talk about learning objectives for each student? Um, we want to be able to think about the planning process um, and specifically how we make decisions from a marketer's perspective. So there are certain processes um, that we, we do and certainly strategic decisions that are made that can be made from a marketing perspective. So we want to look at those. Explain, as I mentioned already, how the marketing function integrates cross-functionally across the organization. Um, understand and, and kind of be able to um, make business decisions within the context of the business environment. And this applies to all business decisions, but we'll, of course, talk about them from a marketing, you know, kind of decision-making perspective. Um, so uh, whether we're looking at the influence of competitors or um, macro influences like uh, the environment or um, the legal the legal environment, politics, um, the economy, of course, um, consumer trends, those types of things have an impact externally on how we make decisions and things like that. Um, and then also apply some analytical analysis to what we're doing. Um, you know, if you, you, there's old adage, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Well, that's that's certainly true that if you want to evaluate progress, we need to be able to measure progress. And so we want to think analytically um, a lot of the time to be able to decide whether our decisions are having the impact we expect them to have. Okay, so... Again, um, this course integrates with your other courses in the program, um, but uh, but we'll obviously kind of consider things from the marketing marketing perspective. So, moving forward, as we walk through this course, um, what what uh, resources do you have? What materials should you have available to you, and such? Um, certainly, Moodle is our learning management system at Coastal Carolina. So. Moodle will be the tool where you'll access a lot of information, um, and we'll go from there. Be familiar with that. Uh, syllabus, of course, you want to look at the syllabus, review the syllabus, and use that as a guide for course policies. Um, we'll have a schedule, um, and what I typically do is I create a week-by-week -week content 
um, schedule based on what I what I anticipate us covering. Um, the schedule will also include deliverables like assignments and such that you're responsible for, um, and we'll we'll have those fairly fairly soon for you to be able to review. Um, textbooks, there's one required textbook, and that's Marketing Strategy by Farrell and Hartline. Um, I, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's, um, it's, it's there. There, there may be, um, I know this is the eighth edition, so there are probably earlier editions, which probably aren't that much different than the eighth edition. Um, there are some cases in there that we'll, we'll likely look at. It has 10 different chapters. It doesn't really cover everything, though, about marketing. And not that we will in, in our course, but um, there's material that it doesn't cover. So there's an optional, additional open access textbook. It's a principles of marketing textbook. And so if you click on on this link or you, um, I guess, I guess you'll have to just type it in or whatnot, but um, it's on the syllabus. So it's available there where you can click on to it. It's text clicking. Um, but, but this is a, a principles of marketing text. So I, I offer this because some of the students in this course come to the MBA with, without a um, extensive business background. And you may or may not have had much um, coverage in marketing in the past. And if you've not had that, then this will be a source for you to refresh or learn uh, basics of marketing. Um, the expectation is that you have some understanding of what marketing is. This is not an intro course. It's an MBA course. So um, if there are things you don't know or understand, you can certainly ask. Um, but the, the good thing would be also to look up this information and have an understanding of it, you know, as we as we move along. Additionally, I'll have uh, PDFs and other readings uh, above and beyond each e e the material you have each week from the textbooks. Um, so you can spend a good amount of time reading, um, as you should for any graduate graduate program, um, and that will be no exception here. Okay. Um, course communication. Uh, by all means, schedule time to meet with me. Um, either by Zoom or in person. Um, I'm here most days in the office, but also Zoom works for a lot of folks as well. Certainly email me, rflight at coastal.edu. Um, we'll also most likely use Teams as a communication process, especially when you do group work. Um, so, you know, that'll be a tool also to form communication. Above and beyond, above anything, feel free to contact me. Um, if you don't understand the course, if you don't understand deadlines, if you are not going to be in class, if you're going to miss work, um, anything that comes up that you feel like will uh, impair your ability to perform or um, get material, then that's worth the conversation. Um, finally, as we wrap this area up, pretty much everything is subject to change. We'll have our schedule and we'll stick to it pretty carefully, but things happen. So sometimes we have opportunities where we need to change a few things here or there. So just be aware that, um, that, that, that I'll make announcements and such and, and let you know if, if we deviate from our course too much. Okay, so how are you graded? All right, so this is an online course. Um, so uh, we've got four different broad um, assessment tools that we'll use in this particular course. One will be a written uh, material reflection, which we'll talk about in a second. Another will be an online uh, discussion forum that you have with your classmates. Third will be a series of four different cases, which are in-depth, fairly lengthy case analyses that you would use to make decisions as a marketing manager. And then finally, you're going to have a, a project where you're in a team of other classmates, where you create a new product and a product plan um, over the course of this semester. Okay, so just talking a little bit about each of these, and let me, um, let me pause and, and say, if you want to stop the video, Go ahead and stop it and read this if you want. I'm not going to go through all this detail 
um, verbally, you can read this. Again, just feel free to stop and look at what you want to look at. Okay, so this material reflection idea. So basically the idea is I want you to take the readings um, and any other material we have in class and, and as the week progresses, so you're going to read material, you're going to understand things, you're going to hear class lectures, I want you to be able to think about how this material impacts you, how you could use this impact in material um, in a vocation in your job or work, how it would apply to you. So it's a one-page summary of the readings as it applies to you. And this will be a weekly, more or less, there are 11, so 11 different times throughout the semester, mostly weekly opportunities for you for you to do this. Okay, so largely this is a completion type of a grade, although there will be some deviation um, in the grading a little bit, but um, for the most part, put some thought into this, write up a good summary of the readings as they apply to you, and you're good to go. Okay, um, discussion forums. So again, likewise, we'll have weekly discussion forums, and in an in a face-to-face -face course, what we will do is we'll have some focal articles where we have a, a, a robust and lengthy class discussion in person. Of course, we don't have that here. We don't have in-person class discussions per se, so we'll have discussion forums which replace those. Um, we'll have some readings that are involved with this, and your job will be to reply to um, specific prompts uh, as they refer to readings that we have each week um, and then respond to your classmates um, as well. So again, uh, this is an opportunity for participation. This is interaction between you and your classmates. The, um, the level and depth of your discussions will have an impact on, on how you're graded and what you bring to the class. If you are writing up these and you're just blah, 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 not really saying anything, you are not going to get a very good grade on this portion of the course. If you bring to the table interesting insights and you push the dialogue, then you'll do better. I mean, that's, that's what we want. We want a discussion. They're not just simply random post forums. They're discussion forums. Okay. All right. Uh, number three out of this four, individual cases. Uh, during the semester, you'll have four individual case assignments, mixes of questions and analytical problems. Um, I, again, these are spaced out fairly with a lot of distance throughout the term, so they're not every week. They're only four, but they are lengthy, so they're going to be three to five page analyses of a company's marketing situation. Okay, we'll have a rubric for that. You can look at the syllabus for the, all, the, all that grading rubric information and obviously ask me if you have questions on those as we, as we get closer to them. And then finally, there'll be a group project. Your group project will be, you'll be one of the, with a team of probably four or five other, other students. Um, you'll have an industry that, that you are working in and then you'll also choose a company that is represented in that industry. And over the course of the term, we'll apply what we'll learn to develop a product launch plan where you identify, brainstorm a new product concept and then apply that to the company, um, the industry that they work in, the market and customers that would buy that product. And then, and then make a presentation on that. Okay, there are five different components of the plan, which are graded components, which we'll, again, work through, work on throughout the term. And we'll be able to do that. But that's going to be an interaction between you and your classmates, very much so, your teammates. So you probably want to use Teams or some other collaborative uh, platform to be able to, to do that on. Okay, so wrapping this up, review the syllabus for additional class policies. Take a look at it. It'll be on Moodle for you to see. Um, we'll also want to take a look at that schedule. It's a week-to-week -week schedule. Um, online, sometimes you can move ahead and look forward and do, do some work moving forward in advance. 
Um, I don't particularly suggest you do that. Um, I think you take one week at a time. It's probably the best policy. There are some hard deadlines on some of the assignments, for instance, the weekly readings, um, the, the reflections, the forum posts. Those are weekly. Um, those are things that you can't really do well in advance, probably. I don't think you'd want to. Um, so anyways, review the um, class policies. And I want to make a note here, finally, on um, artificial intelligence. Um, intelligence that's artificial is just that, artificial. But let me talk about this a little bit more, and I'll walk through these points because I think they're important. Um, number one, over time, external sources have always existed. Um, they've evolved. You can think about maybe many, many, many decades and centuries ago, we have people just simply talking to each other to get information and to help form opinions. We have books that were written by original authors, so first copy books. You could read a book, form opinions, help, help th those books could help you, you know, understand concepts. Certainly encyclopedias, dictionaries. With the advent of digital and um, electronic media, we have radio and TV. Those would all be sources that have been used plenty of times. The internet comes along. Um, beyond the internet, we have self-generated content. So if somebody wants to do a blog, they do a blog. Um, they do self-generated posts. Now, how reliable are those? Well, you know, you take them all with a grain of salt, right? Um, maybe they're reliable, maybe not. And so now we have computer-generated content. So this is like an evolution of external sources for information. Um, and um, in some ways, they're, they're all very, very positive. In other ways, they're, they, can be, they can be challenging. So number two here, um, use these sources, all of them, um, to learn. I mean, don't, don't exclude them from your ability to learn. Use them to learn. If you don't know about a topic, look it up. Look it up on the internet. Ask people about it. Look it up in books. Ask ChatGPT what, what this concept is about. Learn from them. Number three, use these resources to test and evaluate your thoughts and your conclusions. You may be in a vacuum and think you know something about a topic, and then all of a sudden you look at others thoughts on that topic, and they challenge the way you think. So use these sources to challenge your thoughts. Number four, very, very, very important, do not use these sources to think for you. Chat GPT, AI, that's not you thinking. So it doesn't grow you. You don't benefit from that. That's like, that's like taking an encyclopedia and just copying it, turning it in, and claiming it to be your thought. It clearly isn't. That's wrong. It's stealing. Um, it's uh, the theft of intellectual property. Plus, it's just, it's just a, you, you know, it, it, it's cheating. So why would chat GPT be any different? Of course, it isn't. Um, it's a tool but it doesn't replace your original thought. So, you know, certainly if you don't cite the use of any of these um, resources, you're plagiarizing and you get a zero for the, the assignment. Whatever the assignment is, it's a zero. So if you don't cite AI, if you don't cite an encyclopedia, if you don't cite a uh, article or an interview or anything that doesn't come from your head, then that's cheating, that's plagiarism, you know, and 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 obviously that's that's a, you know a violation of of a code of ethics that you probably don't want to do. So, um, so with that, that's a pretty heavy topic, but I excited I'm excited about having you in class. I look forward to this term. Uh, reach out if you have any questions, and um, I look forward to getting to know you more. Thanks.